Hit pause and read it. Or don't. I don't care. Howdy, folks. Here we are again, making another Amberlynn Reed moment all about me. Um, tonight's offering is, of course, based around her newest video titled So Raw, You Guys. Um, it is a Q&A format, of course, with bonus party card game at the end. Um, anyway, uh, brevity is the soul of wit, so let's just dive right the fuck into this dumpster. Oh, one more thing before I go. This is a very highly edited version of her newest video. I have taken the liberty of removing some repetitive speech, pointless crap that I don't want to deal with, and um, just ums and haws and that weird clicking sound she does. Anyway, uh, let's get the fuck on with this, alright? <sighs> hey guys! Hi Amber. So welcome to So Raw. Oh boy. So this is a new segment. It's like a podcast if you bought it on Wish. Okay, whatever. So the reason why I chose So Raw as the title is because of this video clip. This video is so raw, you guys. Fuck. This is... That was her and her melodramatic face trying to act like she's telling us some grand secrets of obese life here. This is one of my most famous quotes. You guys have um, quoted me for years now on YouTube. Because it's so melodramatic and silly, Amber. That's why we do it. And that's one of the ones that is a popular one or obviously situation type deal or the fact that I say moments a lot. You say moments a lot because you do not have a good grasp on the English language, my dear. And books is good for the brain, which is honestly one of my favorites. Sure it is, honey. Sure it is. You know that most of the time, those quotes are associated with periods where you are trying to portray yourself as in distress or being dramatic. And that is why they are so iconic and people catch on to them rather quickly. Or mental things is scary. Again, another traumatic moment for our dear. You know, just some other ones to throw in there. But so raw. So, if you want to give me topics to talk about, go to my Instagram. So Why did she do the hand motion but didn't put the text in there? Oh, my username is velvet dot and dot honey. Oh boy. Velvet and honey. So you can go there, DM me. My DMs are open for literally everybody. Is that safe, my dear? Oh look, we're going right into the Becky shade. So the first thing we're going to get into is how did your ex propose to you? So I will be talking about my past experiences and I don't want to shy away from things that I've been through just because someone else was involved. That's silly. It's taking away my human experiences. So I don't care who was involved. I'm not shading anyone. I'm just talking about an experience where I was engaged. I've actually been- So she doesn't care about anybody else. It's all about Amber. She's not here for their feelings. She is only here for her own point of view. Okay been engaged twice. The first time was when I was 17. I don't even know if that really counts. I have been engaged, personally, me, myself, five times. Um, the first three times were in my late teens and early 20s, and they were all fairly short relationships. Um, year, year and a half, two years. And the fourth time was my first husband. I was married for a little bit under a year. Um, I lived in Illinois and we don't really talk about that that often or in great detail because it was um, a little bit rough. And the fifth time I was engaged is my current husband whom I have been married to for 23 years and counting. Um, and uh, yeah, so Let's get back to Amber. We can maybe talk about that some other time. Just about almost 
two years ago I was engaged and I kind of want to share how I got proposed to because it's rather um, unique if you will. So everyone has dreams of how they want their partner to propose to them. I well, yeah, everybody got dreams, baby, but not all dreams come true. You no, know, I do. I'm very vocal about it as well. My grandfather used to say, shit in one hand and wish in the other, and see which one gets filled first. I feel like if you have a certain dream, or if you have like a certain ring that you want, or a way that you want to be proposed to, let your partner know. I mean, yeah, you could do that if you were a weirdo control freak. But mostly, I would just be happy that somebody wanted to spend the rest of their life with me and thought highly enough to sign a big crazy contract that's incredibly hard to get out of. If they do it, that's great. They listen to you. If they don't, well, that sucks. <laughs> I don't like no... It doesn't suck. You still have somebody that's proposing to you that wants to spend the rest of their life with you. What fucking sucks about that? public proposals as sweet and as claiming as that is like you're literally letting everyone know like this is my woman like i love that but i'm also super shy and i know it's hard to believe but i don't like the attention on me sure sure you don't amber i actually kind of hate it which is hard to believe because i am a youtuber but i promise you know the fact that you're a YouTuber doesn't have anything to do with how you feel about being in the public. Because you are not a celebrity, you are not a public persona, you are a YouTuber. Everything that you do on YouTube is done in the privacy security of your own home. And you don't necessarily have to go out in public to uh, do anything for your YouTube channel or interact with your fans on a regular basis. So how you feel in public has nothing to do with the fact that you are a YouTuber or not. Your girl does not want no public proposal, but I do want it to be romantic. Like, you know, some petals, some candles, some beautiful music. That is so lame. So lame and so mundane like i want to be looking good maybe right after I um that person is gonna have to wait a long long fucking time because you go a great deal of time amberlynn reed without actually washing your hair date night or you know just like super romantic i'm talking like so cheesy that we're just both pepper jack cheese like I mean, at least she admits it's cheesy. Living our best life. Like, I want cheesy. I want things that you see in stupid romantic movies. Like, that's what I want. But how I was... My husband proposed to me, um, kind of in a very unique way as well. Um, I had only visited him for about two weeks um previous to this the first week he came to visit me when i was living in wisconsin and then a, like maybe four or five weeks later i went to maryland to visit him and i was going to stay for two weeks um during the first week we had conversations about our future and uh, my relocating and um you know all kinds of other things and he brought up the prospect of us getting married because his uh, medical insurance at work was um, about to have its open enrollment and it would be the perfect opportunity so um, I was like yeah that's a good idea so you know flash forward a couple of days and he comes running into the house and I'm laying on his couch watching cartoons. Um, he comes running into the house and he says, Bonnie, get your shoes on. We're going to the courthouse. And I was like, what, what, what the fuck? And he was like, we're gonna go get our marriage license so that we can go get insurance later this month. And I was like, okay, um, all right, fine. And so, like, you know, we went, we got our marriage license, and three days later, we were married. Um, we had 
one person as a witness and it was his dad and we both wore black at our wedding it was kind of cute and cheesy and gothic and uh we had dog collars on and we set the we set the detectors off it was kind of great anyway let's let amber propose to <laughs> i was sitting in the living room it was about 2 a.m and i remember it being january 13th because my partner thought oh it's the day of destiny that she wanted to change that day for me because i mean it's a noble cause noble cause years prior that's a day that i got broken up on like broken up with sweetheart where my heart broke you got your heart broken so she wanted to change that day. and you festered and fixated on destiny through your entire relationship with becky day for me into something special which i get where your mind frame yeah her mind frame was she wanted to take that day away from the pain that it was causing you she wanted to erase the heartbreak and sorrow that you were feeling she wanted you to stop festering over destiny so that's why she picked that day she picked and and you were were upset by that because you have some sort of twisted celebration on that day so that you have a reason to pine and fester and be sad because destiny broke your little heart that's what you did during the entire relationship with becky Excuse Waffle, he's crying at the door, but it's very late and he is not allowed outside. Let's let Amber talk. That, it's, it's a good mind frame, but it's also kind of weird all in the same. Your heart was in a good place, but it was in a place that I, I don't know. I don't well, I understand it. I understand it fully. Amber just doesn't have like proper sight. No, no, it was just weird, okay? So I'm in my moo, moo not showered, hair greasy, as per usual. And yeah, as per usual. For most of the duration of your relationship with Becky, that was the state that you were in. So, is Becky supposed to wait until you are freshly and properly bathed and you have your makeup on and your hair washed and done? Is she supposed to wait for that to propose to you, Amber? Because she'd have to be waiting a long fucking time and, and... And all of a sudden, like, she comes out, like, she's also in her pajamas, like, just living her best life. Just living our actual uh, separate lives in the same home. Now, this, when she says this, a lot of things come to mind. Um, the first person I was engaged to, um, used to get mad at me and say, we're not together. We just exist in the same environment because I would be sitting in the bedroom with him reading a book at like, we would be on separate ends of a twin bed. And I would be reading a different book than him or he would be watching TV or playing a video game and I would be reading or just off in space thinking, which is something I have a habit of doing. Most people do. And he would, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about? You can't just be thinking about nothing. Nobody thinks about nothing. Why don't you ever talk to me? Why don't you ever tell me what's on your mind? And he'd say that we only existed together. And this kind of sets me off. Like, do you expect a person to be in the same room with you 24-7? You know, feeding your every little whim and giving you ego boosts and ego strokes whenever you need one? Is that is that what you expect from your partner in a relationship? I don't know. There was definitely a disconnect, especially... That's her new buzzword, disconnect. 
when she walked out of the bedroom with something in her hand and it was like this clear box and it was small and I could tell something was in it and she just sat down across from me and handed it to me and I looked at it you guys it <laughs> This is embarrassing, but it's like an actual true situation type deal. It was a tiny pink vibrator with a engagement ring wrapped around it. Like it was like, say this is the vibrator. It was like on it. Like, I mean, that is kind of fucking funny. That is kind of funny in the right context between the right two people that that would have been absolutely priceless and wonderful. Um, but it's between Becky and Amber, so it was awkward and strange. And also, on a side note, um, if you are new here, I am a weird artist, and I primarily work with garbage, um, primarily busted baby doll parts. And um, recently I started making molds of the baby doll hands to use in my paintings. And Amber has the most amazing adult size, meaty toddler hands I have ever seen in my life. And I just, I just want to make molds of those and like use them in crazy, crazy art with a whole bunch of little ones around them. Oh my God, I want molds of Amber's hands. That. And she looked at me and said, Will you have sex with me? I would make such terrifying fucking art with a set of Amber's hands molds. For the rest of my life. And I said yes. I am. Um, we hadn't had sex. We had sex one time in the last like three years. So it was. I mean, first of all what does Amber consider sex? Because I know that she does not have a very good grasp on human anatomy. Um, judging by the way that she spoke to doctors during her pre-cancer years. Um, anyway, <coughs> it's really hard to want to be intimate with a person when they are having um, uncontrollable, profuse vaginal bleeding every single day, day in and day out for years and years on end. It's very hard to want to be intimate with a person like that. It's very hard to even just want to make out with them and, and even feel remotely sexually attracted to them because you know that they're very ill and, um, you know, frankly, being around another person's bodily fluids, well, one type of a person's bodily fluids when you're expecting another type of bodily fluids is incredibly fucking off-putting and very unsanitary. Um, <clears throat> so I don't fucking blame Becky. Now, what I think about this, the way she proposed, I like to think that Becky was trying to be hopeful that since Amber's cancer issue is over and she is no longer having a wild, insane, uncontrollable, unstoppable menstrual cycle, that maybe Amber would get healthy, lose weight, and become uh, physically able to be sexually active. That's what my mindset is. You know, Becky was just being hopeful, hopeful and being optimistic. But Amber, Amber is very literal and very, she is face value and absolutely nothing else. It's all on the surface with Amber. It was a definite, I don't know. It was very like disconnected. Um, I don't know, but that. Again, with the word disconnected, she doesn't even use it in the proper context. 
how I was proposed to. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. I thought nobody has asked about that in a really long time. We all want you to leave Becky to fuck alone. I shared it before. I thought we actually both shared it before. No one has neither of you have ever shared how you propose how you were proposed to. You have shared some convoluted stuff about your sex life where you were sexually active, you weren't sexually active, blah blah blah. Becky says you're a really, really great kisser, so on and so forth. Or in like a past live stream. But maybe not. The question is answered. And I will say, everything comes from a good heart. I like to believe. Sure it does. You like to believe a lot of things, Amber. But just because you like to believe things don't mean they're fucking true. Eat that. But just because something comes from a good heart doesn't mean it's not awkward. Okay. That is true, though. That is true. You can be awkward as fuck and still mean well. So here we have an advice column. I am very much the type of person. I really wanted to cut this out, but as I was working on the edit, my husband comes over my shoulder and says, she made that question up herself, or she found it in some weird advice column and picked it for herself, just so she could have something interesting to talk about. And um, you know what? I tend to agree with him, so I left it in. Let's let her talk. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> the advice that someone needs from me, I'm talking to my teacher on Snapchat. Technically, it's my professor. I had this professor last year, and we were flirty then, and I thought that was it. Until I found out I had them again this semester, and we picked things right back up. This time, on Snapchat. I'm 21 and she's 45. Sure, it's unethical and I didn't find anything too wrong with it until I found out she's married. Help. 21 and 45, that's a huge age gap. Like, gigantic. But you both, you guys are both adults. So, I'm just going to digress away from that because... Again, using a word out of context, this she must be um, having really good conversations with her therapist because she's got all kinds of new words lately. Or maybe it's wifey. I'm not going to sit here and judge people. As long as you're legal, she's your... Waffle, you are not going outside. It is entirely too late. Professor? So I'm going to go ahead and assume that not only, like you said, that's unethical, but she can get fired, which I think that she should, because I don't think that student- I can't believe that Amber is sitting here giving this kind of advice um, after a life of absolutely not living or experiencing anything. And I can't believe that she thinks it's okay for a person like her to give advice like this to anybody. This? Regardless of the fact that it's all based on common fucking sense anyway. You don't fuck around with people that are your authority. No teachers, no bosses, no supervisors, no lieutenants, no commanding officers you don't have relationships in the workplace or in an authoritarian environment <sighs> anyway and professors should ever have that type of intimate relationship because that just gets messy um especially like it's college bro like if you're falling in love with a student that's this is the part where bill was like yo she picked this question when she said it's college bro <laughs> student you're not gonna want to grade them bad on their homework like or their no you're gonna hold that shit over their head so you get into a relationship with a student let's say you're an unethical teacher you get into a relationship with a student and they start to want to back out of the relationship you hold their grades over their head and you got them for as long as you want to have them. Or work or anything like that. I feel like it's just going to be super messy. 
and they're married i don't fuck with no cheaters you need to amber amber lynn reed your girlfriend is polyamorous just because she is with you does not change the fact that she is polyamorous by nature eventually she is going to get a little antsy and get a little wanderlust and go seek somebody else either in front of you or behind your back so you don't get with cheaters but you're gonna have to get used to jade hooking up with other people to talk to the head of the college that is called a dean dear let them know bill said that it sounds like one of her young adult novels or um some lifetime movie bullshit save those snapchats show them what your professor is doing because it's not right it's not okay because are you the first person they've done this to is this something that they do all the time they choose like their little favorite and they start like grooming them if you i wonder where amber heard the word grooming i wonder what kind of news or, or media she consumes that isn't just about food or h3 h3 becomes rocky territory when you are with someone who has like this higher power over you oh it's pretty simple they're married that is why um you know there's laws against dating in the workplace there's not laws but there's policies in companies against dating in the workplace um you can't date students um you know because it's when you have authority over somebody and you have power over somebody um you could ruin their life if you break up with them and it fucks up the company it fucks up the school it fucks up the person's education they're your professor go to the authorities so i have been asked a lot to talk about my foster care experience and honestly i i have tried so hard to like do whole videos dedicated to that but it was i totally sympathize with her um i too had a incredibly unfortunate um upbringing <clears throat> and it is very very hard to just start at like a point in the timeline and go chronologically um, because there's bits and pieces that I don't quite remember and sometimes like it'll take like something to jar my memory like I'll be watching a movie and I'll remember something that happened like in my house during the time the movie was playing and that'll set off like a whole sequence of memories anyway let's let amber tell her story and then i will interject with mine take a lifetime oh and um incidentally if you guys ever wanted to hear the tale of the first time that i was in a runaway youth shelter um there is a video in my backlog i think it's titled the first time i heard violent femmes or how come there ain't no chicks in the violent femmes um it has to do with together youth shelter and uh the thumbnail has the femmes in it anyway if you're interested go look for it if not meh um a lot happened during my whole foster care era but i feel like to maybe work my way up to talking a little more about it we'll talk about the first few hours after i was taken from my parents so i was in elementary that's got to be traumatic school i was like eight or nine years old okay so she previously has stated a number of times eight or nine age seven she also said she was a little older um so i don't know the age fluctuates i'm already iffy and i but i'm not going to discount her story i remember getting called into the office i do want to say that there's like holes obviously i was young going through traumatic experiences so i'm only going to be 
Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. Be able to share what I actually remember. There's gonna be a lot that I leave out, obviously. So I get called into the office and there is a police officer there. And I was like, okay, this is weird. And they also called in my brother. So at the time I had two brothers. So me and my brother get put in this cop car. I don't remember many things being explained at that point. And next I know, we have my little brother. I, I don't remember. Poof remember how we got him because i know we didn't go by um obviously our home which was a trailer there's really nothing wrong with living in a trailer it depends on where the trailer is and how well you keep it and its grounds run down moldy whole um both of well i have three uncles but two of my uncles had trailer homes and both of them were absolutely beautiful places to live they were small they were a little cramped but they both kept them very very well and very very nicely drug infested just disgusting trailer and right now she is describing my first husband and his father's trailer which was absolutely the most vile thing on the planet um when i first met my first husband he was telling me that they had a double wide trailer with a hot tub bathtub in the master bedroom and it had four bedrooms one of which they used as an office and the um the grounds were always kept nicely and they had a giant eat-in kitchen and so on and a washer and dryer in the trailer. So when I get there for the first visit, um, he strategically keeps me away from the place for the first few days and then we have to go and visit the trailer because he runs out of money for the hotel room so I walk in and it's an absolute wall of garbage in the living room just like huge piles and piles of garbage in the living room and um, I didn't at that time I didn't get to see the master bedroom or the bathroom in that bedroom but um sure they had a hot tub bathtub in that bedroom but it was full of really old bottles of urine and the bath because uh the toilet had broken years previous and they were just peeing in bottles both of them were just peeing in bottles and leaving it in the room and eventually they taped the door shut of the bathroom and then eventually they just filled that bedroom with garbage and left it shut and the garbage just kind of grew you know toward the front of the trailer by the time I had met my first husband um, I think that I was with him and stay in there for about three weeks and clean and clean and clean and nonstop and I was just like, hey, fuck this. Let's go get an apartment. No matter where it is, let's just go get an apartment. And so we did. <laughs> um, anyway, let's let Amber tell her story. Like, that's, that's putting it lightly. Like, the dirtiest thing you can imagine, imagine that like 20 times more. Wow, okay. I mean, I can literally imagine worse even still than my first husband's trailer. Um, I have been around some places and known some people. And um, I have learned to not differentiate. Because sometimes you need a safe harbor no matter what. Um, anyway, I also have a schizophrenic stepbrother and um he is not very good at maintaining his own hygiene or the hygiene of his dwelling and um he ruined a beautiful beautiful old house because 
um, his father and my mother didn't really keep very close tabs on him. Um, anyway, let's continue. And, and yeah, I can imagine some really, really disgusting fucked up places. And I have been some really disgusting fucked up places. Not to toot my own horn. Next thing you know, we come to this like huge house and my baby brother's getting taken. It was so sad. I remember that was probably fucking traumatic as hell. Remember a woman with short hair standing at the doorway. Me and my brother were allowed to go um, and say bye. I was so like confused. I remember a lot of tears. Um, my brother didn't really cry. I think he was more so just like shocked by what was happening. Little stoic man. And then they end up taking us to the police station where I just remember sitting there for hours. And I think they tried to explain to us what was happening, how they're going to take us to a children's shelter, um, how my baby brother was in like this foster home. I guess the children's shelter didn't take babies. I think like the youngest that they took was maybe like four or five. Yeah, they usually try to put the babies into foster homes with an actual like set of parents rather than put them into um, mass care facilities because it's really not good for a child's development. <laughs> None of that shit is really good for a child's development. Um, anyway, let's let Amber continue. From what I remember, and I was sitting here like eight or nine, my brother was a year younger than I was, and then we get dropped. Okay, so it's eight or nine. It's eight or nine now. Um... When I was 10 years old, um, I had to deal with uh, police officers coming to my house and my mother and grandmother sitting in the living room with me while I spoke to the police officer about um, some incidents with my biological father. And that was the probably the most hard thing I've ever had to do in my life, even now still in my 40s. Um, it was really fucking awkward and really, really traumatic. And I had to say a whole lot of shit that you never, ever really want to say in front of your mom and your grandfather. <laughs> um, anyway... I, I sympathize. I really sympathize with Amber. Dropped off at this big building where we see like all these big. Did you say big? Random staff, um, and they're like asking us questions. Like there's so many questions and so much paperwork. I'm like, me and my brother are young. Why are you asking us? Like, like it was just so traumatic. It. Like, we just got taken from my parents, and we're, I'm over here, like, bawling my eyes out. My brother's just, like, traumatic, like, stone-cold face. And then they separate us because, so, when me and my brother were separated, I thought I was never going to see him again. Like, I was so scared. But what they did was they had this, like, sheet, this paper of, Sorry about the weird edit there. She goes off on a, on the intake and then goes back to how they separated the boys and girls from each other. Like someone's body and we had, I had to, I don't know like what my brother went through. I'm pretty sure he had to go through the same. She's talking about intake and what they do is um, they have an outline of a human form, either male or female, depending on who they're dealing with in the intake. And um, what they do is they look at the child or the adult that they're doing the triage on and they check for bruises or cuts or any signs of past abuse or neglect. Like um, they'll, they'll look for healed uh, blemishes. They'll look for like healed broken bones and things like that, especially 
when you know when you're eight or nine years old so yeah she probably had to strip down at least to her underwear and have a good look over because they needed to make sure that she was not being physically abused or you know hurt in any other way other than you know neglect which is pretty fucked up in and of itself same thing um i had to get completely naked in the shower they had to look all over my body um they had to write and i myself have been through this a number of times as an adult um not really an adult i, I want to say in my late teens and uh twice in my 30s um when uh i had to stay at a um haha -ha hospital every time that i've had to be in them which is four four times yes i i think um they like have you strip to your underwear and they look at your identifiable marks your scars your tattoos your blemishes your your birthmarks and they catalog them in one of those little human forms they like they make the little hash marks where your scars are and they draw a little weird picture that is a facsimile of your tattoo or or they just write tattoo and point a little arrow <laughs> at the spot um anyway let let's let amber talk down if i had any marks anywhere etc etc and now that i think about it now it seems very weird it's not weird it's not weird it is for the safety of the child it is to make sure that the child is not being abused in any other ways i feel like as the woman that i am now i would have declined well amber it's not for the woman that you are now it is for small children to make sure that they are not being abused but i feel like if i would have declined I would have gotten in trouble because while living in the children's shelter, like you had to do everything that you're told to do. They had like a point system and you got points for doing what they told you to do. And then if you declined, you got like negative points, which I mean, that's pretty standard in group home living. I was not in a children's shelter. I was in a runaway teen shelter quite a number of times in my youth. And um, they too had a merit and demerit system where if you completed your daily tasks and you interacted with everybody in the house in a positive and uplifting manner and you contributed to the household as a whole with, you know, being a decent human being and not being a piece of shit and starting fights and being antisocial and stuff, then you know, you got to go bowling, or you got to go to the fucking arcade, or they took you out to a PG-13 movie and bought you popcorn and shit. So, I mean, like, what she's about to explain is pretty fucking reasonable. And that is actually, I'm told, how normal households work. I grew up in a very, very disciplined household um aside from the uh brutality and negativity that i had to live through um my family is military and uh law enforcement and medical personnel and uh, that being said they tend to live very regimented lifestyles and so um, I was taught at a very young age how to be self-sufficient, how to fend for myself, how to do my own laundry, how to clean up after myself, how to wash dishes, and how to cook for myself. Because they didn't want to fucking bother with me. <laughs> Amber's parents, on the other hand, just gave her what she wanted so that she would shut the fuck up and leave them alone um it's quite a contrast put you in a negative like you didn't get to do like games or go on outings and stuff like and she doesn't understand why why that which what 
every day we lived our life based on what what i don't understand how come doing negative things and refusing to do your chores means that you don't get to go out and have fun with everybody else why why can't i i don't get it off of these points like that's what we were as as human beings you're saying this now but you have been on and off Weight Watchers quite a number of times over the last decade, my dear. So, um, it's whatever. It's whatever. This was just point system. So, I personally thrive on discipline and structure. Um, when I have a set schedule and a set amount of tasks to do every single day and I wake up and know that they have to be done, it is so much easier to go about the rest of my day and make up other shit to do for myself. Um, it's not necessarily getting over depression but it gets me moving and it makes me think about other things other than my depression and myself. So after they checked my body and all that, um, I had to shower. They found that I had... Damn, we're still on the checking of the body. Head lice. Obviously, I had head lice. I had head lice for a majority of my childhood. That sucks. I didn't get head lice until I was in my very early 20s. And um, I was living with a bunch of other very early 20-year-olds in a very, very run-down house in Millville, New Jersey. And one of our housemates got picked up by the local police station and was taken away to Cumberland County Jail where he picked up the headlights and a terrible terrible respiratory infection that he gave to everybody else in the house when he got home both of the things and we had to do this whole ordeal with fumigation and boiling all of the bed sheets and every article of clothing in the house it was like the cleanest that house had been in 40 fucking years <laughs> And, um, yeah, that, that's my headlight story. The second time was much the same and also the same person going to the same jail and coming home with a different batch of headlights to spread around. Until I went to the children's shelter and they did the craziest, like, thing to my hair that I... They probably gave her one of those really, really strong chemical shampoos. Um, I have a cosmetology license, so I have had access to these kind of chemicals for almost 30 years. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not a crazy thing. It's just a very, very, very stinky shampoo. And then they run a knit comb through your hair, which is a very, very fine tooth comb. And you run it through the base of your scalp to pick out the little, they're called knits, but it's an egg sac. And the lice kind of, I don't know what the fuck that was. The lice kind of just like attach the egg sac to the base of your hair with the little strands from their butts. And you have to pick those out because the chemical kills the live lice, but, you know, the eggs are still in there and they're still, li they're still living and they're going to hatch and they're going to make more lice, you know, and the cycle continues. Anyway, let's let her talk. I've, have, I have not had head lice since then. Well, that's good. That means that you haven't been in very questionable places. It doesn't say anything about your cleanliness because, frankly, head lice really love clean hair. It makes it easier for them to move around and get to the delicious parts of your scalp. And when I tell you my parents tried to get rid of my head lice, 
multiple times and it they didn't do it right never worked i haven't had it since then you have to clean your entire environment you gotta boil your bed sheets and all your clothes and you gotta steam clean the carpets and the fucking walls and you got to get in the couch and get all up in the couch cushions. You have to clean your entire fucking environment if you want to get rid of head lice. So whatever they did, it worked. Love that for them. Um, after uh, I What? She loves that for them. That is the dumbest fucking thing that she could say. I mean, this is a children's shelter that rid her of her head lice, supposedly, allegedly, forever and ever, never had him again after that. And she loves that for them. Like, that is what she has been saying when something has been negative. When, when something causes her distress, she loves that for her. Like, why are you saying it now? Why can't you just say what you actually mean and say what you actually feel? Why is that so hard for you? It, you know, took the shower. They did the head lice treatment. It was actually dinner time by that point. And that oh boy, she remembers dinner time. That's when I got to meet all of the other kids. And, and I think that's where we're going to end it there. Uh, it was just traumatic. I was confused. Um, it wasn't until later on, like a few days later, where I started to understand what was really happening. Um, but we can maybe talk about that some other time. But yeah, that was the first few hours, things that I actually remember. Do I still like Trisha Paytas? Frenemies brought out her true colors in my I left this in here for reasons opinion i feel like trisha paytas gets away with literally everything bad and disgusting and racist and homophobic mental illness shaming body shaming she gets literally she gets away with everything and amber is so fucking jealous because amber was fixated on her and wanted to be her she wasn't just obsessed with trisha she wanted to fucking be just like trisha paytas she has said so many things that has actually made me angry that I just, I don't, I can't do it anymore. Um, I try not to like talk about it because like, I love this part here. She gets all fucking high and mighty and weird. I don't want her, because I know that she has watched me in the past. Highly doubt I'm on her mind anymore. Um, I don't want her to take my opinions and like, I don't know. I don't. She don't want to catch Trisha Paytas's ire. That's what that is. I don't like expressing when I don't like someone. I Why not, Amber? Um, if you express when you don't like someone, you don't have to feel distress when they are around you. You don't have to put yourself through a bad situation if you tell somebody right off the bat that you don't like them. I personally feel bad for it. Um, I feel guilty. I feel like I should be sorry. I don't like you. Oh my God. Do you need me to like buy you a meal? Amber, Amber, if you did that to me, um, I would probably knock you the fuck over. Point blank period. That is the most ignorant, disgusting, vile, stupid thing I have ever ever heard anybody say oh you're sorry you don't like somebody so you want to buy him a meal or buy him a purse that's fucking sad amber that's sad why can't you just why can't you just avoid that person just be away from him i don't really like you get away from me don't talk to me do you want me to buy you a new purse like i am that type of person i feel bad when i dislike people i like to give people benefit of the doubt are you trying to buy him a purse so that it makes them like you? Is that what that is? But I just can't. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. You're sorry. Go ahead and be all high and mighty. You're a fucking hypocrite, Amber Lynn Reed. You are absolutely 100% a hypocrite. Next segment is called Bad Choices. Mm, I have made a few of those. Because you know we've all had them. We all make bad choices. So I figured 
that she would pull out the party game meant for like a large group of people to play. Per episode. And where the fuck is wifey? I would answer three of these bad choices. I think that this could be fun. It could oh boy. I cut out a whole bunch of stupid shuffling here and uh, she tried to make it look like this is all random and she's just picking these three just now for this video, but she set this up 100%. Add a little oomph. Have uh huh, whatever. Have you ever played strip poker? I actually never have. I have. I have played strip poker. I have played strip rummy. I have played strip war and I have played strip spades. I am a very, very, very good card player. Um, I very rarely have to take off my first layer of clothing. Anyway, let's continue. Played strip poker and I don't I play poker for money too. Think I ever will. I don't like my body. I don't want anyone seeing my body. Would you pose a That's sad, Amber. That's really sad. Um, incidentally, before I had weight loss surgery, I had absolutely no problem with people seeing my body. I was so perfectly comfortable in my form. Um, it was only after I lost weight and started to deflate and get really saggy in all of the most unfortunate places um, that I started to really dislike myself. Um, you know, when I look in the mirror, all I see is, is like an empty bag of flesh with a bunch of scars and wrinkles and sags and weird places. And, and it's just, and, and you can see bones in odd places too. And it just, it's not attractive and it's not fun to look at. When I was a bigger person, um, you know, I, I felt at least a little bit desirable. I had smoother skin at least. But um, yeah, anyway, let's let Amber talk. As a nude model for an art class. I've done that too. Not exactly fully nude, but in my underwear and uh, in my late teens. Yes, I have done that too. Again. Because I value the arts. Don't like my body. I don't want people seeing my body. But I will say, I would love to see someone my size do that. Because every time I've ever seen... I have seen people her size do that. But then I am a very big fan of the arts. And what does she mean she hasn't seen anybody do that? The sculpture she was playing with in the discount store. I can't remember if it was TJ Maxx or Ross. But that big fake bronze sculpture she was playing with is a replica um, of a series of fine art pieces of obese dancing women that are actually really provocative and profound to look at. Like nude modeling for art, it's always like someone who's just like beautifully sculpted. I think we need to see someone a little more like me next time. Last you know what, speaking of someone like her in the arts um one of my favorite favorite comic book characters is despair um from the comic book sandman she is um the twin sister of desire and the way she is illustrated is so dark and so detailed and and so grotesque but beautiful and profound and and just so full of of who her character is meant to represent that it just moves me to to look at every single panel that despair is in so i mean find beauty where you can but there are representations of obese beauty in the arts. It's just, you know, in the eye of the beholder. Incidentally, um, Sandman is a fucking brilliant comic. Neil Gaiman is an amazing, amazing science fiction writer. Anyway, let's get on with Amber's mess here. 
one. Have you given out a fake phone number in the past year? I have not, but when I was in high school, there was this guy that I ran into three. Sorry for the cut, sorry for the cut. Different times, at three different locations, and. She totally made this story up. The first time, he was like, I remember, uh -huh, uh -huh. I gave him the Jenny Craig number. Sure you did, Amber. Sure you did. Because you know that offhand. Yes, I did. Then I saw him again at the Kmart in the makeup aisle. And... I'm sorry, Amber. Um, what was this man or guy or boy doing in the makeup aisle at the Kmart? It was like a couple weeks later and he was like, um, the number of the wasn't the right one. And I was like, no, I promise it was. And then I ended up- Was he fat? Just giving him my number, but I switched one number at the end. And then I saw him for a third time and I said, I don't know. I guess just the numbers aren't working. And he like actually believed it. Sure he did, Amber. So he was like, do you have a MySpace? Because back then it was MySpace. And I was like, no, I actually don't. <laughs> I, I feel bad telling people I'm like not interested in you. So Why? Why? You know, if you tell people you're not interested in them, it gives them an opportunity to reflect on what they are doing wrong that a person like you would not be interested in them. So I think that's the only time that I have ever given also, have you ever considered the possibility that maybe he thought he was doing you a favor by hooking up with you? Given someone the wrong number before? Because nine times out of ten, it's like, okay, if you want my number, I'll give it. Why not? You could tell that he was... Well, that's creepy and gross, and that is how you get hurt. The type of guy who asked anyone with two legs and a hole... For their number and i was not in it so sure honey sure so that is actually the end of the first episode of so raw i don't, <sighs> don't know is this something you guys enjoyed i know i enjoyed it so i will be continuing um and as for the rest of my content up in the air currently up in the air junior birdman up in the air upside down so I realize as I'm editing this that there is almost zero mention of wifey, Jade, Alex, daddy, whatever, aside from when she talks about the rumors. Um, like zero mention of Jade. And the fact that she says wifey, during the rumors section, which I did cut out, um, is, is kind of making me suspicious because normally she gets offended and defensive when her viewers refer to the girlfriend as wifey. She just says, just call her my girlfriend. And the joke has been lately, my girlfriend, <laughs> you know, Anyway, all right, so that that makes me a little suspicious because Amber does really like to twist words. Uh, she thinks she's good at it, but when she says wifey didn't have anything to do with it, okay, wifey didn't have anything to do with it because you don't call your girlfriend wifey. <laughs> That's just, you know my opinion my observation it's not a fact it's just the way i see things um i am a worst case scenario kind of girl anyway um i hope that you enjoyed my take on things i hope that you enjoyed my little bits of personal tales and if you did please consider dropping a like um anyway i hope you guys have a good night and you do something creative and productive with the rest of your time. Bye.